Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our teaching today. This is Tuesday, December 8th. We are going to be talking today about the occult. Um, this is a topic that not too many Christians want to discuss. Um, unfortunately, it's something that is not talked enough about in our churches. And so a lot of um, Christians have gone astray and found themselves ending up in the occult unintentionally. So um, let's start today by me giving you a testimony of my experience with the occult. About 2010, um, I had gone through some family trauma and I was seeking solutions and information. Now, I was raised Catholic and then at one point became Lutheran. I raised my daughter in a Lutheran church and school. But in the churches that I went to, these subjects were never discussed. So I was unaware of the ill effects of the decision I was making to go ahead and seek a psychic. Um, actually, a friend at work had said to me, I know this lady, she's really wonderful, she's very spiritual, she loves God, so it sounded good to me. And she's really knowledgeable. So I called her and I consulted her. And she spent her hour with me, talking with me. Um, I then, in addition, when I was um, at a marketplace with my stepmother at the time, there was a group of um, palm readers there. And a young girl just began, without even my permission, she just began to start to read my palm and as soon as she said something to me about my daughter i just burst into tears and ran away from her but i was opening up doors to the demonic realm and i did not know that it was totally and completely unintentional see that is the problem that we are facing is that so many people so many christians unintentionally open up the doors to the demonic realm because they don't even realize that they're doing it. They don't even realize that what they're doing is a bad thing. Right. In the book of Hosea, it says my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. That's yes. why we titled this unintentionally opening doors. That's right. And it's a very serious topic. And it it's going to really help a lot of people today. And you don't hear enough people address it. You don't. That's why the Lord put it on her heart to address this today. Yeah. Our second teaching, the second part of this, is going to actually be about <clears throat> the gifts of the Spirit. So we are going to talk more about that then. But just to give this um, some form of reference. Everyone has gifts given to them uniquely from God. Some people have a beautiful, powerful voice and they have a gift of music. Other people have a gift of writing and they write beautiful poetry or books, or you have a gift of preaching or a gift of teaching. There are so many different gifts that each and every person has. That's why we're called the body of Christ, because no one person has every gift going. So we are to operate together as the body. The thing of it is that lots of us have gifts that are, in the secular world, unique. They are people that are seers. We see things in the spirit realm, either with our eyes open or closed. Sometimes we have prophetic dreams. Sometimes we operate in the prophetic and we know things that are going to happen before they happen. Sometimes we hear things or we feel and sense things and we just know that we know that we know that something is going to happen or that um, a situation is right or wrong. 
We have gifts of discernment. So some of these gifts, um, when they are not talked about in traditional churches, leave a person feeling like you are weird, you're unusual, you're witchy. Um, there are even people, I have a very good friend that I used to work with who had an amazing gift of seeing and prophetic. And as a child, she, you know, saw many things and had many prophetic words. And her mother actually cut that off and told her to stop it because she didn't understand it. So what happens when people have these gifts, you feel like an outsider because other people are not talking about them. So you keep quiet about them. And then one day you read something or you hear someone speaking or you find out that there is someone operating in these gifts like psychics and palm readers and angel readers and all these other things that are going on. And you go, wow, there's someone else like me. And you end up unintentionally gravitating to occult activities because you don't even realize that it's actually a demonic strategy. So can I read the list? Yes, please do read the list. We came up with a list of, of I'm sure there's more than this. Yeah, I'm sure there's this more than this, but this covers a good things. amount. And what we titled under it, wherever there is a real, there is a counterfeit. And there's a reason why you counterfeit a $100 bill. List of activities. As Gina said earlier, psychics, palm readers, angel readers, Ouija boards. That's a big one. People think they do that as a joke and it's harmless, but what you need to understand is that demons and the devil, that they don't care whether you're doing something as a joke or not. They're just looking for an open door. So when you do that, you have unintentionally opened up a door and just said, come on in. Yeah, you've and invited, they are very legalistic. You, they, they are legalistic and you've given them a legal right to your life when you mm -hmm. have done that. Yes. Going to a medium, sorcery, occult, witchcraft, and black magic. Uh, in America, people don't think about it as much, but in Haiti and in Africa and in India, they're very aware of the spiritual realm. Yes. So the Americans have to get caught up in that way. Yes. Some, you, sometimes you have so much knowledge, it says, you know, you know, too much knowledge uh, you want to have wisdom along with it. Mm -hmm. uh, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Horoscopes. People think that's a minor thing. They just get up in the morning and read their horoscope. They think that's innocent. That's an open door for demons to come into your life. Astrology. Mm -hmm. New Age practices. Reiki. Crystals. For me personally, if I went to somebody and they were just going to lay their hands on me, I don't care if, if they're touching me and even if they feel like they have a healing touch or I feel warmth coming out of their hands, I want to know that it is coming from the Holy Spirit. So that that's important to me. I don't just want anybody laying their hands on me. Like I said, where there's a real, there's a counterfeit. Sure. Someone might lay their hands on you and you feel... Oh, it just feels like such a healing touch to it. But that, that's exactly what Reiki is. Well, it is. And, and in, in foreign countries, like you mentioned, like Africa and Haiti and so forth, they're actually called witch doctors. Sure, that's why people go to them. Yeah, because they, they get results. People think witch doctor and they think of something totally different. No, actually, it's the same thing. That's exactly what it is. And a couple more that will open doors into your life. The demonic is pornography and sexual sin, which in the King James and the New King James Bible, it, it, it's called fornication, which is sex outside of marriage. If you choose to do that, you are opening up doors of the demonic, whether you like it or believe it or not, we're giving you the truth. 
Absolutely. Um, so I want to explain to you what happened after I consulted this psychic and, and so forth. So it was unintentional. I did not deliberately dabble in the occult. Right. Okay. It was not my intention to do so. I was in a place of hurt, a place of mourning, a place of sadness, a place of confusion, and I felt lost at that time. This was prior to being a born again believer. I was a Christian, but not a born again believer yet. So then I began to read some books from the library. And some of them were going in to occult activity, talking about being able to see in the spirit, talking about, um, trying to think of the word that they use. It's not prophetic. It's, um, clairvoyant, clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I began reading these books, I had had these gifts since I was a little girl and I never talked about them. Everybody used to say, it's your imagination, it's blah, 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 but I knew it was real. And as I began to read these books, I became more enthralled with them because I'm like, wow, there's a place for me. Somebody understands this. There's other people like this. So it and actually was, draws you in. Yeah, right? I was getting excited because I'm like, wow, I mean, this is so cool. I mean, this is a real thing and there's other people like this. and. And I can learn more and I can get more. And I was getting very enthusiastic about it. Now, around the same time, I also heard two speakers I had never really heard before. One was Joyce Myers and one was T.D. Jakes. I sort of heard them, um, not looking for them, but I heard them on cable network. And I was like, wow, I think I'm looking for that. Where do I go to find that? So I began searching out for the Lord and I began attending a non-denominational church. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I began really reading the Bible and seeking God every day. But the fact remained, I had opened doors to the demonic realm that I did not know that I had opened and I didn't understand. And I began having what people would call night terrors. Now, you take a nightmare and you magnify it times a thousand, that would be your night terror. Um, it starts in a dream, in a nightmare, and it continues into the reality. So even once you wake up, it is still there, present with you. And it was escalating night by night getting worse and worse and worse until it reached the pitch where one night I was being choked and I was being choked in my sleep. And when I awoke, I was still being choked and I could feel the hands around my neck and I couldn't get free and I couldn't breathe and I was being choked. So I was terrified. And you saw demons around you. You told me before I did. that you saw I did. demons coming They were coming coming to the nightly. And I started doing everything I thought I was supposed to do. I was praying in tongues. I was citing scripture. I was singing hymns. I slept with the Bible next to me. I mean, I was like trying to do everything in my limited knowledge that I thought I was supposed to do. And we met who, uh, a friend who is now our brother in Christ, um, who actually specializes, hi Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he actually specialized in this realm, having had a lot of experience with it. And my first encounter with him, I went up to him for prayer and he took my hands and he said, have you dabbled in the occult? And I said, no, because I didn't think I had. I wasn't answering him on, uh, dishonestly. I thought the occult was like Satan worship. I didn't know what the occult was. Right, that's why we said unintentionally opening doors. Right, and he said, you haven't seen psychics or palm readers or horse, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I did that. He said, well, this is where this is coming from. 
He led me through a place of repentance for having um, been involved in those activities and sought out information from these people and then prayed over me. And then really, I felt very set free. And I realized that what I needed to do was trust God. Amen. You know, that's where the key of it is. When you don't trust God, you start looking for information from other people and other sources. Now, there are people in the church that operate in the prophetic. Absolutely. Okay. And yes, you can go to someone in the church that operates in the prophetic because the prophetic they is are very real. in tune with Holy Spirit, filled with Holy Spirit, in kingdom alignment, and they are only telling you what the Lord is giving them. But when you seek out these other people, these mediums and these psychics and these palm readers, horoscopes, yes, they do have gifts. Yes, they really do. A lot of them, some of them are fake and phony, but a lot of them really do honestly have real gifts, but they are not hearing from God. Where there is a real, there is a counterfeit. So I think we're going to need to probably go into part two. Right, um, we thought we were going to have this wrapped up in a I thought so too. one part teaching. That definitely is not happening. No, but we can go into part two because this is an exciting topic to discuss because it's not discussed enough. And I know there are people out there that are filled with questions. And so, the good news about this is that you can be set free. Yes. So we're going to go on to part two. And we'll give you, we're going to go to scripture, what God says about doing these things. Because we always want to go to the word. What does the word say about this? Absolutely. So we're going to go to the word. Gina gave you an amazing testimony of what happened with her. We're going to go to what God says about it. And then we're going to tell you how to be free from it. It's always from a, just a true heart of repentance, turning away yes. from it. And never doing it again. It's that simple. I gave away the way to be free from it. You still have to turn into part two to hear the rest, though. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of good stuff left. We'll see you shortly. Love you guys.